Now notice that these sums of squares for treatments are actually formed for every individual. That is, every individual in our data set will actually have a value for the treated deviation in the same way that every individual in the data set had a value for error deviation. What we're doing is partitioning a person's score into one part treatment and one part error. Let me show you this a little more clearly. Here is the sums of squares for error formula. And let's remind ourselves what this is. This is an individual's deviation from their actual score, the yij, minus the predicted score, their group's mean. I just showed you the sums of squares for treatment, and notice that this shares a common quantity. It shares the predicted score for an individual, that is, an individual's group mean. Now notice something. There is a deviation between an individual's actual score, the yij, and the grand mean. But we're missing that piece. That is, what do we call the deviation between individuals and the grand mean? Well, if we think back to our original definitions of variances, the variance of y is simply how much individuals deviate from the grand mean. And that's actually a quantity here too. That is the sums of squares total. So what we've actually done here is partition or cut up the total sums of squares, the total amount of variability in y to be a function of the sums of squares associated with error or just noise within groups and the sums of squares that are associated with the group deviations from the grand mean. And these simply sum. The sums of squares for error plus the sums of squares for treatment are the sums of squares total. That is, what we're really trying to do with this model is cut up or partition the total variability in the outcome measure as one part that's simply noise or error and one part that is associated with how much there are treatment differences, how much those groups differ from the grand mean. So let me back up and give you a formula for the sums of squares total and a slide because this is a fairly important one. The sums of squares total is simply the sums of squares associated with the actual score for individuals versus the grand mean. And these are the sums of squares you would get if you completely ignored your factor structure and just found the sums of squares for the y variable alone. So if we weren't even thinking about an analysis of variance model, if I simply gave you a data set and I said find the sums of squares for y, this is what you would calculate. But what we're doing in an analysis of variance is partitioning those sums of squares. That's what's going to allow us to understand whether the treatment deviations are big or small relative to the error deviations. So let's actually partition the sums of squares and do this graphically so hopefully you can see that really all we're doing is describing the location of a person as a sum of two parts, one part error and one part treatment. So let's go back and let's talk about Tom, who I pointed out before. Tom was Y101. Tom paid $340 and Tom flew on Delta Airlines. Let's consider somebody else. How about Joe, who is Y102, the 10th person in the second group, Southwest Airlines. Joe spent $277. Let me get rid of the rest of the people and let's just consider Tom and Joe. I've also put in the grand mean, Y bar. Let's start this with the total deviations, that is, the yij minus y bars. Let me draw this in. Here's the total deviation for Tom, and here is the total deviation for Joe. Notice that Tom is above the grand mean, and Joe is below the grand mean, but each of them is deviating from the grand mean. Now what we're doing with the partitioning of the sums of squares is simply cutting up these individual scores into two parts one part error and one part treatment. Now let's remind ourselves what error is first. Error deviations are simply the difference between what an individual actually paid and what we would predict for an individual. So the deviation between the yij and the y hat ij. But let's remember the y hat ij, the prediction for any individual, is simply whatever group they're a member of. So for Tom, we would predict for Tom whatever the group mean was for delta. So the y hat 10 1, the prediction for Tom, is just the mean for the first group, the mean for the delta group. So the error deviation for Tom, again, was just how far above or below the mean for delta he was. Now for Joe, who is a member of the southwest group, the prediction for Joe would be different. The y hat 10 2, 
is actually equal to y bar 2, that is, the mean for the southwest group. So Joe's deviation, just like Tom's deviation, is how much they differ from their own group's mean. Now let me connect some lines and we'll see something right away. We've already shown the error deviation, the amount that these individuals are deviating from their group mean, but we still have a piece of their total deviation we've yet to see. That is, there is still a deviation for Tom's score that we haven't filled in yet. And there's a deviation for Joe's score we haven't filled in yet. That final deviation is the treatment deviation. That is, the difference for each individual, the predicted score for each person, minus the grand mean, the Y bar. Let's use Tom first. So the prediction for Tom, the Y hat 10 1, was simply the group mean for delta. That's what we would predict for Tom in the absence of any other information. The prediction for Joe would be Y hat 10 2, or simply the group mean for Southwest. Notice when I connect across that we have perfectly cut up each individual's total deviation as a component of two pieces. That is, the total deviation for Tom and for Joe is one part error and one part treatment. The error deviation is simply how much each of those individuals differs from their own group mean, or said differently, how much those individuals differ from what the model would predict for them. The treatment deviation is simply how much those individuals' predicted scores, that is, their group means, differ from the grand mean. But notice that every person has one part error deviation and one part treatment deviation. And this is why when we go to those sums of squares, the sums of squares for error add with the sums of squares for treatment to be the total sums of squares in our data.